Okay, so recording is ongoing. I'll keep an eye on the chat. Very good. <clears throat> so let's see, I'm gonna log in first in TM and this time I'm gonna do it as if I were a TS07. So I'm basically gonna do things as if I were a uh, TM planner in an STO scenario. And I'm looking for any outbound delivery documents instead of inbound delivery documents. So I'm, I'm launching the uh, I'm launching TM right now. And if anyone cannot see the screen, let me know. Okay, I know we've had some issues last, uh, I think it was last week, Friday. I know it was Friday the 13th, so that may have had something to do with it. Nonetheless, I think now we're okay and everyone should be seeing my TM screen. If not, let me know in the chat. Okay, so we, here we go. What I'm basically going over now is basic navigation and also how to edit your results page in the uh, DTR overview transportation requirements link so that you can see what you are uh, looking at, what you're planning to plan, let's say. Okay, so we are very familiar with this page already or should be at least. This is usually the one I start with when I want to perform searches for my uh, outbound delivery documents, DTRs. Remember, we can do so also by delivery dates to and from. Now I'm using a different environment because this environment reacts better to packing. And since it's becoming so critical and I wanna show you guys always the best practices, remember that we shouldn't plan anything that isn't packed, okay? Whether we are TS-01s, TS-07s, we should always look first to see if something is packed. Now we can do that in several ways before we start planning. So if I'm the TS-07 and I'm supposed to look for an outbound delivery document, whether I'm using dates here like I did or simply using the outbound delivery document number. Remember the original delivery is where I would add my outbound. And here I can just add the number. In this case, 4209, there's only one document here. So we're not gonna have, uh, we're not gonna really get lost in, in our search. So we added the outbound and we get only one result. Basically, I created this one expressly for this session. So I see that we have our documents here and we are already becoming familiar with what this result page looks like. Okay, so this shouldn't be anything new. Remember that you can manipulate the columns to have them organized in a way that you know what you're planning for. And the icon that we would be using is this one, Open Settings tab. Now I've showed you a couple of things already as to uh, look, for example, looking for our INCO terms, right? If, for example, I wanna know what INCO term has been selected for this uh, specific DTR, you can always search here and add that. If you wanna add it right to the top, just select where you want it, push it over, and now it's gonna be the first thing in our results page. So here we go, this one is FCA. Now remember, this is not an INCO term, it's not a commercial term because we're talking about STOs. Okay, so what we are going to understand now is that if we have an FCA INCO term in an STO scenario, what we're doing here is we're basically sharing responsibility among the issuing plant and receiving plant. But now in terms of planning, only the issuing plant is responsible for planning. So I'm the TIA 07 in the issuing plant. This DTR here is assigned to me, it's in my planning profile. And even though it says here INCO term FCA, what that means is that, okay, I'm responsible for planning this DTR because that's what the INCO term FCA does, right? It kind of like segregates responsibility in TM. And also know that we will have no automatic uh, freight orders generated in TM. We can check that too, okay? So we'll have absolutely no freight orders generated automatically. When we click on this DTR document, what we're going to see is just the DTR outbound and the um, PO or the STO, sorry, in this case, okay? And if we actually scroll to the right, we'll see that the original order number is here as well, okay? Remember, you can also manipulate the displayed columns and if you want to have everything organized better, you can do so from here. Look at your displayed columns and say, okay, you know what? My original order looks better if it's at the top. And now before I exit this screen, what I wanna also show you is there's a way to also understand if your 
items or your freight unit has been packed, right? The items have been packed in ECC and now the freight unit will display the items packed. And how do we do that? In the hidden columns, and now it doesn't work with the filter, okay? Uh, for some reason, I click on the filter and I put here packing and it's gonna return uh, nothing. Okay, it doesn't, so it makes me think like, okay, there's nothing there. But if I click on the columns and I scroll down throughout the options, I can see that there is an option for packing status here. Select that one and click on it. Make sure that you, if you want to put it directly on the top or second, third, you can always select it here. Move it over. And now we have our packing status with our original order, inco term, DTR, type of DTR, original delivery, and so on. So I'm going to click on OK. And now my results page is going to display my packing status here, right here. So it's going to say completely processed if the items have been packed properly in ECC. And I know I can move on, okay? There's also a way to see this in the cockpit, and I'm going to show you, and I've already showed you last week as well. But here we go. We see completely processed. If we had more selections, right, it would have a different status. It wouldn't say completely processed here it would say that it's not relevant. And for some reason, it says not relevant when it's not completely processed. And I'll show you that too as well. Okay, but in this case, we only have one document and it's completely processed. We can actually click on the DTR document here. And now when it launches, we see under document flow, okay, we're looking again at the DTR. We see we have the DTR, the outbound, and the freight unit, and no freight orders. Why is that? If this is an FCA scenario, well, again, it's an STO, right? So STOs will not automatically generate, and by um, no reason, no scenario, even if it's DAP, XWorks, FCA, none of these reasons will we ever have an automatically generated freight order. We always have to plan all of them. Okay, we see the items below. If you guys take a look here, we can see our items and we have our handling units. If you see, I'm gonna unfold these sections here. So we have three different handling units. So packaging has been performed correctly and the items have been packed separately. So we have the heater here packed with this specific handling unit and the information linked to it is here. So we have the info related to the product itself and the line above, we have the info related to the handling unit. Remember that the handling unit information is the one that matters in the SOW. We're never going to have information in the SOW related to the uh, product, okay? So the weight, volume, and so on of the actual material is not displayed. What's important is that we display it in the handling unit, okay? That's the one that's going to have the impact in the SOW document. We can have different displays here in terms of the uh, weight and volume and dimensions of the handling unit and a different one for the product ID, of course, if we have done so in ECC. So we could have different results as we have here. We have the gross weight of the handling unit, 18 kilos. Well, we have one kilo for the product. That's because in ECC, I've played around with the packaging and I've edited the net weight and gross weight of the item here. So that's why they're displayed differently. But basically the one that's important for us and the one that should reflect the final gross volume, weight and dimension should be the handling unit. Okay, so the handling unit here, we see that it's, linked to the heater on this line, heater on the second line, and also the oil filter here on the third line. So everything seems to be done correctly. Okay, we can also, if you take a look here at the bottom, if I scroll down a bit more, very useful too. Every time I click on a line, if you guys see how the below section changes, right? So this below section, and I'm gonna maximize this a little more, we see that it has the package details. So it tells us the item, the package ID, the volume, weight, net weight of that specific line we're selecting. The same thing if I select the product. It will also show me details related to that item. It'll tell me the document reference, so it'll give me the STO number linked to that line as well product, what it is, what item it is, uh, the transportation group, even the packaging material I selected here in this case on pallets, the goods value. So there's a lot of very interesting information when you simply click on the items. And I know we haven't gone through this, but this is uh, quite important and actually very useful to understand if things have done have been done properly in ECC. Okay, so we have the product details, we have the content ID, which basically doesn't really give us much info here. 
and the notes if we want to add any notes to the specific line item. Okay, we haven't really spent much time on this, but I think what's very interesting is to see that we understand how to identify if an item has been packed properly. And if we want to look at the details of this item, what STO it's linked to, the um, volume, weight, net weight, and so on of each item, we can do so just by clicking on the line here. Okay, so now we know that it's been packed properly. We know that there's been no freight orders automatically planned. So we basically, as TS07s, we know that we can go on and now plan for this uh, specific freight unit. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Now I can just close this window. And remember, I can do so from here. I can simply select this line and go to the cockpit. Or I can go to planning and then go to the transportation cockpit from this planning screen here. So let's do it through here. We select the line, we click on the transportation cockpit, and this should take us to our planning, our very familiar and uh, already known notorious uh, planning profile. The good thing about the planning profile for the STOs is that we only have one option. So this one is quite easy, right? We're going to see all FCAs, XWorks, DAPs, no matter what inco term it is, with only the selection of one single planning profile. Okay, so let's remember how to do this. For UNOE, we had different planning profiles. For STO, we just have one selection. And it's quite simple. If we click on the matchbox here under planning profile, we see that we have the one for UNOE STO planning profile for STO. I mean, it, the description is quite clear in this case. We also remember we can select the column for freight unit selection profile. We can click on the match box here and we only have two options. OK, we have the forward or delivered and we have the UNOE STO. So if we look at the top here, FO selection profile for UNOE PO STO freight forward or delivered. In this case, it's not the forward or delivered. It's the one that we're looking for is this one here for UNOE STO, not the forward or delivered option. So we can click on this. We have our selection for the freight unit and we do the same for the freight order. Okay, we also have our selection here for the freight order. Okay, so we can select here and see that we have our options. I think New York has also been sharing information on how to select the correct planning profiles. So I think this is quite clear once you have it set up. We can save it. We can also set it as our default. So we always have this selection. And since uh, STOs only have one option, that's what we're going to do is just select this option, click on save, and we can move on to our cockpit. Once that is done correctly, what we do is we get to our cockpit and we should have a list of freight units displayed. In this case, we only have one because that's what I've just set up. I've just set up one so we can just work with one. And if you see, it's already split into three stages. This is because I've already performed planning before this session just to make sure things worked. So once I cancel the freight order documents that were generated, the system always displays unless I, of course, cancel or delete the freight unit and then I regenerate it again, but there's no need for that. The system will always show you the freight unit into the amount of stages that we planned earlier or the latest plan we performed. So in this case, and if I maximize the freight unit stages here, we'll see that we had three stages, right? From our source location, which is Unimid, going to Mombasa port, from Mombasa port to Dar es Salaam port, and excuse my pronunciation, and then we have our last one from Dar es Salaam to Monusco Logistic Base. So basically three stages. We should have three freight orders, the three that I deleted. So remember, once you do that, once you delete your freight orders and you go back to your cockpit and now you have three freight units and they're all the same, you see 757575. Seven, remember that if you want to plan again or generate new transportation proposals, what you do is you select all three of them, okay? Remember, not just one because it, the system will interpret you're only planning one stage, you're planning all three. So you always have to select all the duplications and then click on transportation proposal. Okay, so that is one of the key things that we have to remember. Also, what else? Remember that we can look at the items here. If we click on the uh, column, we can sort them, of course. We can group them. We can um, also select if uh, a filter, if we had a filtering option here, if we had several freight units, we could select between those that are packaged or not packaged. 
correct or any other identification that it may have. In this case, we only have a packaging option. So you could always filter your results by either if they're packaged or not. Always select the ones that are packaged because those are the only ones we can plan for. All right, if they're not packed, then we should always get back to whoever is responsible for packing an ECC and tell them that we have this outbound delivery number that still requires packing. Okay, remember that you can always play around with your setup and add available columns that we may have here or change some displayed columns. Okay, this is very useful when we're performing a search, when we have tons of different results and we want to search by outbound, inbound, PO, STO, freight unit, DTR, whatever it is, we always have an option to search for any available columns that we may not have displayed, save the selection we made, and then when we search using the magnifying glass, or when we filter simply by selecting one of these columns and clicking on custom filter, we will only see the freight units, outbounds, DTRs, and STOs that are in this search result. If they're not here and displayed, even if our DTR is there or STO is there, if we add the number here, for example, and it weren't in the uh, actual result, we wouldn't have it displayed. So we always have to go make sure that we display the column that we want to visualize, whether it's the original delivery, original order, or anything other, and then perform our search. Okay, that will show us the, uh, the um, outbound uh, STO or inbound or any other document. It will filter out all other options, and then we can perform the planning. Okay, I'm keeping an eye on the chat because I'm going to be, I think this session we could also use it for any uh, questions or things that you may have tested and discovered. So is there anything up to this point that we may need to clarify or maybe someone has discovered something testing in the system that you'd like me to try before I plan? Anything you'd like me to do before I start planning for these freight units or would like me to go over again? before I perform this planning. Okay, I'm going to keep an eye on the chat. If no one says anything, I'm just going to move on. Okay, remember, we also have a very interesting option to select our layout, right? The transportation cockpit has several layouts. We can click on page layout here and make sure we select the one that we're interested in basically. And so far, all we have been talking about is the UN map layout and why we were using that was because if we, for example, select our freight units, the stages that we have here displayed and we update our map, right? Remember this very important. We clear all selections and we add new entries so that we clear any data that may have been there already in the past. Now we go down to our section here for overview. If we select the tab for map, remember, and this is also very useful, the system, the cockpit will now display the route that is uh, that, the one that we're going to be planning for, right? So based on these three stages here, we will have a map display with the route that we're going to plan for, that we are about to plan for. Now it seems the system is not responding, so maybe I can just refresh this. Okay, so if that doesn't work, I'll just refresh and do it over again. Okay, here it is. All right, so now we have our map display. Remember, you can also maximize these screens and we would see basically the trajectory or the route that our goods are going to follow. Remember, you can zoom in or you can simply click on the eye icon here to focus on that particular route. So we see that we are going from point A, B, C, and D. So we have one, two, and three stages. So we should have three freight orders when I plan. Now, if this uh, looks like nonsense to you, as you think, you know, why are we doing all this churn here? Why don't we just go directly from here to here? Well, that's up to you when you start generating the transportation proposals. You're basically, the system is telling you that this is what the route looked like based on your last uh, transportation proposal. Okay, so if that doesn't make sense to you, now when you plan again, you can select or make better selections so that instead of taking this entire route, which probably takes two times as long as just going from here to this section, if that's possible, because I know that for some reasons, maybe that's the only route that we can take. This helps you to visualize it, right? So this map is a very good option. We can minimize this screen and now go back. Remember the freight order section here will only display the freight orders. 
that you have planned or are about to uh, accept once you have clicked on transportation proposals. So we have selected these three freight units, which is basically the same one, okay, repeated. We click on transportation proposals and now the system will offer me uh, new routes or options that I can select from. Okay, again, I'm keeping an eye on the chat, nothing new there. So as the TS07 right now, I'm logged into TM and I'm planning for this DTR, this requirement for transportation. Okay, and that's my responsibility, even though this is an FCA. Okay, there you go. This is an FCA scenario. It's my responsibility as a TS07, as the issuing plant, okay, the TS07 and the issuing plant to plan transportation. Again, remember, we have several proposals. The stages represent the freight orders that I'm about to plan for. We have different proposals with more stages or less stages, depending. So, for example, the difference between the first one and the second one is that we have an extra stage. Okay, so we're basically following the same route up into uh, Dar el Salaam port. In this case, in proposal two, there's still another Dar el Salaam to Matadi port and Matadi port to final destination. So this may be even worse if I select proposal two. Of course, it all depends on the cost. So remember that before you make a selection for any of the proposals, you're filtering by cost, distance, or anything that you consider to be uh, critical before you select a proposal. Remember that you have 20 proposals that the system displays. Proposal six is actually showing me five stages instead of just Four. I hear somebody. Does anybody have a question? Yeah, Brian, I, I have a question if possible. Would you would you mind opening the STO? Because I'm I'm concerned that uh, the dates that are transferred to TM are actually looking at the creation date of the document rather the date that was set as delivery time. Okay, sure. So yeah, let me do that because that's actually very useful. So we're looking here at loading start time, right? The 18th of December and unloading is the 23rd of December. Okay, so let's check now in ECC and take a look at that STO and see what that looks like. We also have other dates here, which are the transportation. Let me see if I can make this even wider. Start date, so it's basically reflects the same start date and time okay so let me leave this open here and let me go to ecc and cross-reference data to see if you're right sasha okay if at any point you guys don't see what i'm doing on screen let me know i'm basically just going into ecc now and i'm going to look for that uh, outbound delivery and check the dates Okay, so I'm going to go to ME23N just to uh, search by uh, STO. Let me get rid of this. And okay, so let's see. Basically, we have the document date here is the 16th of December. Uh, let's go to our purchase order history. Let's take a look at the outbound the posting date is the 16th here okay entry date i'm just double clicking on the outbound and let's see what that looks like okay so the planned goods issue is the 20th so the dates here are the uh, 20th of december the document date is the 16th and if I cross-reference with the ones in TM, I'm looking at 18th and 23rd on loading. Okay, so let me see if we have any other dates here that may contradict what I'm planning. Okay, let me also look at the header level probably. Okay, so basically here I only see the transportation is planned for the 20th December. The document date is the 16th. The, let's see, loading plan GI, delivery date, everything is set as the 20th here. 
so the date is really the transportation planning date here, loading planning date, goods issue is the 20th December, and then in TM what we have is the unloading date is the 23rd, and loading date shows as the 18th, and the 20th is already for Mombasa port. So on the 20th it should already be in Mombasa port, which does that make sense to you, um, Sasha, if you were looking at this no, in cross-reference? Yeah, I, I noticed this on inbounds also. Uh, it looks like uh, TM is picking up wrong date for uh, for the planning. Uh, on inbound, uh, it takes creation date of the document. So um, I think there might be a need to check this with, uh, with configuration too. Okay, definitely very good. Very good insight here to take a look at the dates, right, that are assigned in the um, inbound or outbound delivery document to understand when it's actually set up. If the creation date is the one that has been taken by TM, where it's the transportation date. If, let me go back to the item details here. Basically, the plan date is the 20th, even though uh, the document date is the 16th, but then TM shows us proposals that will start on the 18th, which is uh, strange if we're not planned on, on doing the goods issue until the 20th here. But we could always cross-check that, and that's definitely recommendable to navigate between if you guys have those roles, right, that you're capable of taking a look at TM, what that displays, and then what ECC is displaying. And if you find any issues like this, this is definitely worth reporting. Because our transportation proposals in TM are using uh, data, supposedly using data from the inbound delivery documents, uh, the delivery date is the one that should be displayed here as our final unloading date here, which should be not the 23rd, or at least not the one that we uh, have here in our planned uh, GI or the date of their transportation that is planned. So definitely worth cross-checking that. And if you guys find any discrepancies, let us know, right? Maybe we can uh, raise a ticket on that issue as well if you see that, that it's something that is uh, constant. Anything else you guys want me to check here? Since I know that we've repeated this session several times and you guys are familiar with planning, maybe something like this is, is more interesting for a session like this one. If not, uh, I'll continue with the planning. But basically, this has been a very good insight. Thanks, Sasha. Anything else, guys? Okay, so I'll keep taking a look at the chat. If you want, just unmute yourselves. What we can do here is basically, remember, you can navigate through the proposals and start making some filtering or sorting depending on the cost, right? So let's say you want to see the cheapest transportation proposal first. We would always go here and sort by ascending, which I think is actually transportation proposal one. In this case, it is. If you want to go by duration or distance, you can do so here too. So take a look at the columns that the uh, transportation proposals offer. You can also define a filter. In this case, I don't think we have other transportation uh, proposal offers or means of transportation that are different than C. I think all our proposals show a C means of transportation. There's no airplane in this case, but if you want to do this the quick way, you could always define a filter. Remember this portion, we've explained this before, but let's go over this again. We have a drop down that we can select our filtering options from. So let's say we want to select the means of transport. We want to say, okay, always contains is always a better option. And we want to go by air this time. We click on okay. If we had any options for air, it would display them here. But in this case, all our options seem to be by C. Okay, so we can get rid of this filter and see our results again. So all our transportation proposals are basically going to be by C for, for this uh, freight unit. Okay, keep an eye on the dates. Maybe you can also uh, filter by that if you want to go maybe by the latest delivery date. Let me see what the latest delivery date looks like here for proposal 20 with actually six stages which is quite a long trip here. And uh, I don't know if it makes much sense, Mombasa port to Bosaso port, to Dar es Salaam port, to Kinshasa port, that looks like quite a journey. And we have here uh, the dates for uh, January 4th, when actually our planned transportation was December 20th, according to our outbound 
delivery document. So basically transportation proposal 20 would not be very good for us. So maybe we want to go with our first one. So I'm going to stick to our first option. Remember you select the uh, checkbox here under the selected column for proposal one. And we see that we're basically going to accept planning and get three freight orders based on this planning. OK, we have them here. Remember this. We have our options for the stages. We can see each one of these stages individually in the map if we want to as well. We can select one of these freight orders, go down to our map again. But now instead of looking at map, what we're looking at is map display because that's what displays our freight orders. Scroll down a bit and we see that exactly where it's going to and where it's coming from. We can maximize this as well so we can have a, a better look at this. Maybe we can even zoom out to understand exactly where we are and where we're going. So basically we're following the same route that we had selected the first time around. Okay, remember the map will always display the full route and the map display will only display the legs, individual legs. So since we're looking at one of them, we only have one here in the map and you can always just select another stage and the map will change and show you the other stage. So basically there's a very long uh, stage that is supposed to go by road. Okay, um, which quite, can take quite a long time. Okay, that's why I think the uh, delivery date is quite uh, in the future when we were looking at the proposals. OK, so we have our three freight orders here. These are, remember, they're not planned yet. We have to click on save for them to be planned. And then the number here under document needs to change to a 6-1 number. OK, so just basic reminders. And uh, Jamil, I see your comment here. I'm going to look at it in uh, two seconds. Basic reminders is that right now we're only planning. OK, we're not. Uh, we're not getting the final route. This is not the final route that the freight forwarder carrier is going to perform. We're just basically planning our transportation for ourselves. Okay, we this transportation route will not show up in the SOW. The cost of the transportation estimates that we just planned for will not show up in the SOW. This is just for us based on the historical master data that we have that you have provided to New York. Uh, already from back until October until today. That's the master data that the system has. So these are basically routes that are usually used by entities. OK, so this is just an estimation and this will help us understand in the future if the routes that we're following nowadays are very are comparable to the actual ones, if they're actually cheaper, more expensive, if we can optimize our transportation in the future and so on. OK, Jamil, let me take a look at your uh, chat here. So please note that the outbound INCO term is FCA. Mombasa by 20th December 19 should be OK. It's matching the transportation proposal. OK, so uh, by yes, that exactly right. So when we were looking at the outbound delivery document here, we saw that it wasn't really far off at all, right? Uh, Sasha was really talking about the inbound more than the outbound. So. And uh, again, I'm using a different environment and I have to be honest, this environment seems to be more accurate than the training environment. OK, it seems to represent what production will look like more accurately. So when we are looking at this date, the 20th makes a lot of sense when we're looking for uh, we're looking at an FCA INCO term, right? So we're thinking that if by the 20th, we're going to be at the, let's say, handover location, right, Mombasa port, then that makes sense because that's the uh, planned transportation date here, okay? So final destination also is not that far off because it's still the 20th. So everything looks accurate and okay. But again, keep an eye out on that when you guys are planning. Make sure that the dates uh, that you're selecting transportation proposals for are uh, the ones that are in the inbound delivery documents, okay? And if something looks off completely, go back to ECC, check your inbound and outbound and see why maybe it's not displaying accurately. Okay, so thanks, Jamil. Any other questions, anything in the chat, please add it there or unmute yourselves and speak up. We have our freight orders here that are not yet planned. I'm gonna click on save and that's gonna now display my a freight order document numbers here, which is perfect. Now, before I exit this screen, 
Okay, in an FCA scenario, right, talking about STOs, we're not talking about UNOE scenarios. So these are not goods that are coming from an approved PO. This is a transfer of goods from one mission to another. What we're looking at here is that we have three freight orders, but as the TS-07 or TS-08, which will come into play uh, shortly, we're not going to be responsible for all these freight orders. This is actually going to be the last time I'm going to have a look at my three freight orders in one screen. Once I exit this screen and I go back to my freight unit or DTR as a TS-07 from the issuing plant, I'm only going to have visibility of one of these freight orders, the one that I'm responsible for uh, managing the freight order in a later stage as the TS-08 for the issuing plant, okay? The receiving plant's TS-08 will have a visibility of the other two stages. So from handover location on, it's going to be the TS-08 uh, receiving plant's responsibility to do perform actions in TM, while before, from the source location to the handover, it's going to be the issuing plant's TS-08. Okay, but the responsibility of the TS-07 of the issuing plant is to plan the entire transportation proposal. Okay, if I click on the freight unit here, and again, remember, I'm still logged in as TS-07 from issuing plant. I should only be able to see, if I go to my document flow here, one freight order, and that's what I see. I only see one, which is the one that we're responsible for as the issuing plant. The other two will be visible in the receiving plants, okay? Uh, TS-07, TS-08 um, <clears throat> responsible staff members will see the other two freight orders. We're only going to see one here. What happens if I go to stages? I'm going to check the stages tab here and see what I see under the stages tab. Remember the stages tab should reflect the entire route. Okay, so you still see the entire route stage by stage, which is good because that means that since I planned it, I should have visibility on the entire route. And then if I scroll to the right, what I should see is only my freight order. Okay, the other two don't display here. Okay, so I'm not even going to see if the carrier has been assigned or not. Basically, I'm only looking at what I'm responsible for. And that's a major difference between UNOE scenarios and STO scenarios. Okay, what we can see in TM. Okay, our planning profiles are linked in that way. Okay, based on the purchasing group that was added in the STO, we can see certain things as the TS-07 for the issuing plant and certain things as the TS-07 for the receiving plant. And this is a perfect example of this. Okay, so we plan the entire transportation route, but we can only manage the freight orders that are linked to our plant, right? That are linked to our planning profile. Okay, any questions so far before I move on? Okay, we are now 20 minutes away from 12 o'clock. So we've done our planning, we have our freight orders, and now we can see as uh, TS-07 from issuing plant what we have visibility on. Any questions, any comments? Okay, if not, I'm gonna move on. So we have our freight orders, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close this window Remember, I'm still TS-07 in the issuing plant. See, I can still see all my freight orders here. Okay, perfect. So I can exit this screen and go back to my DTR page here. And if I can show you guys, if I now go, instead of looking at DTRs, if I go to my freight order management tab and I select overview freight orders, now I'm still in the issuing plant, right? Imagine now I switch to TS-08 and I want to see my freight orders, the ones that I'm responsible for. Remember, it's always a better option to select the change query because I don't think we have the outbound delivery field here unless we know the freight order by heart. But usually the info we will have is the related to the outbound. So what we have here is we're going to select or add the information linked to my outbound delivery, it's down here, okay, ECC delivery. Even though it says UNOE, this is for the STO, 
Okay, we see COE and other document references. I'm gonna click on apply. And now if everything works well, I should only see one freight order and here's the case. So if I'm the TS08 in the issuing plant and I search by outbound, here's what I'm seeing. Only one freight order, the only one I'm responsible for. So this means I'm only gonna be adding a carrier or adding a freight PO if this were the case to this single freight order. If I'm going to be using a, a UN carrier, and this is something we're going to be looking at tomorrow, okay, how to assign a um, UN vehicle, right? So let's say your mission is the one transporting the goods using your own vehicle, how we can assign that here as well. Okay, but we're going to leave that one for tomorrow because I still want to go through some things today. So here you go. This is the only access I have to this freight order. Now, if I log out and log in as my receiving plant, and I'm going to perform the same action and just bear with me for a couple of, uh, for one minute, actually, I'm just going to log out and I'm going to log back in, but now I'm going to do so as the um, <clears throat> TS08 in the receiving plant. Okay, so I'm going to select a different user here and I'm going to access TM, everything is going to look exactly the same as it did just minutes ago. But when I go to my freight order management tab and I search for my freight orders, overview freight orders here, using my outbound, now I'm going to see two freight orders instead of just one and instead of just three, right? I could see all three of them, but in this case, if I just add my outbound, which is still here, and I click on apply, I'm going to see the other two freight orders that I'm responsible for here, okay? Even if I select them, if I click on these freight orders and I visualize the document flow is only going to show me the freight order. It's not even going to show me any other documents that these are linked to because <clears throat> it's the TS07 in the issuing plant that is responsible for the freight unit DTR and so on. I could even go here, and this is something that is quite important. I want to go over this again because some of you may not know this or may not remember this because we've done it, but maybe too quickly. This is important. If we're clicking on the personalization icon and I open the personalization dialog box, what this allows me to do is add columns or add tabs that are not displayed uh, automatically in TM, right? Let me make this a little bigger here. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is show you that right now, these tabs under title and under stack one are the ones that are visible in TM so far. <clears throat> okay, I just really needed to clear my throat there. Okay, let me go back to TM. So I'm scrolling down. And I see that I have all these tabs here, the ones that are visible up on the top here. But there are more than these, okay? If I go back to the top and I select add, and I can do this mainly in the freight orders, it's very useful. You see that we have a set of documents that show up here, change document, communication history, uh, document references. You can scroll down and see you have tons more. You can add them all, of course, if you want to, but one of them that is very useful is the document references. If you select it and click on OK, that will automatically add that new tab all the way to the bottom under a new stack. Now, I usually keep it under a new stack because what that means is that you're going to have another section in your freight order that is going to show you the document references. And let me show you what that looks like. Let's say I'm going to accept this just the way it is and I click on save. Now you see we have another section. We have a section at the top with all the tabs that I'm looking at, the document flow and the document references. If I display this, will show me all the documents that are linked to this freight order. So even if I am the TS08 in the receiving plant, and I'm not responsible for planning transportation for an FCA scenario in uh, talking about an, an STO, okay, I can still see the document references. So I can see the DTR, the outbound, and the actual STO document. If I add this document reference tab, okay, and the way to do that is going to the personalization icon here at the top. And now remember, it's a stack number two, that's why it shows up below. If I don't do that, or if I, let's say I make a mistake, and instead of having it under stack two, I go like this and I push it up to stack one, 
if I save it, the section disappears, but it's still there. Now it's just a tab, right? We see if we click on the folder here, we have all the tabs and now we have the document reference tab here. The problem with this is that now you're going to have your documents here, but if you move back to your document flow, you're not going to see those document references. So you always have to go back and forth. The best way is to always add it on as a second stack. So you could always go back, select it again, and now push it down to a stack two. And if you save, now you have it below. Okay, so this is definitely very useful, especially this document references section that we can always cross reference documents here at the top as well. We can add more options. We can add more columns. If we click on add, we can see maybe we're interested in seeing any other um, options here. Maybe we can even see the map to see where it's going. Uh, not all of them are working, okay? So keep that in mind. In production, it's worth taking a look to see which ones are. Let me see the change documents, let's say, or maybe I want to add a communication history and change documents. I'm going to click on OK. That's going to show me now stacks three and four. Maybe I want to combine communication with change, and I go back up, and now I have change document and communication history uh, as a third section, but together. So I'm going to click on Save, and now you see you have these two sections so no communication history and the change documents below if we had any we would have that here as well but basically this is just to show you how you can add different sections under your documents you can do this for other documents like DTRs and freight units but basically the document references which is very useful is only displayed under your freight orders okay so that is Definitely very important. I hope you were paying attention to that. Again, the session is being recorded nonetheless, but it's uh, now that you're here, it, it's worth taking a stab at this now. Now, I was talking to uh, Sasha earlier, and we were wondering if we could delete some of these documents under document references. And uh, so far, and as far as I've tested, usually when you click on edit, some of these options should be available to edit, display, insert. But in the case of the document references, I can't click on the delete button. Even if I select the line, all I can do is insert. So this is something we're also looking into to see how we can do that as well. I understand maybe we don't want to delete the DTR outbound and STO, but maybe once we assign the freight PO, we want to delete that document. So at least we should have an option for that. OK, let's cancel that. Remember, if you want to delete the freight orders, so we've done the planning, we have an estimated planning, but now we want to maybe delete the freight order because we made a mistake, OK? And I'm not talking about yet managing freight orders, even though it would be the TS-08 or TS-02 if this were a UNOE scenario, the ones that would have to do this. You would simply go to your freight order and always remember to do this in sequence. So you would have to go to the last stage first. And to ensure that this is the last stage, you can always go to the stages tab under the freight order and check and see where this is going. So basically the source location is Mombasa port. Destination is Dar es Salaam port. So this is not your last stage. So we should delete this in sequence. And to do this correctly, what we do is we would uh, close this window. So we have 895 is not the last freight order. So we delete that. Go back to our DTR and we see here. And remember, you can actually see it from here. Our source location is Dar el Salam, and we can go to our destination location. Remember, you can manually drag and drop these here and put it maybe here and see that this is Monusco Logistic Base. So that's my last stage. I can go back. And now select the line and see that this is the one that I can delete. Click on it. And once you're in that freight order, you can always delete the freight order or cancel the document, which is really the, the nomenclature used. You'd click on edit, go to the double arrows here where it says more. And once you select that, you have your cancel document option here. If you click on it, you'll get a warning message that says that it cannot be reverted. OK, I'm going to cancel that in this case because I want to use this one tomorrow. And that's how you would cancel this document. Basically, the freight order would disappear and you would do that one by one. In an FCA scenario, you'd have the TS-08 in the receiving uh, 
entity who would have to delete the two freight orders that they're responsible for. And then the TS0A in the issuing plant would have to delete the other freight order, which is the one from source to handover location. And then they would be able to plan again. Okay, so that can definitely be done and replanned. Okay, so that's um, basically a very uh, valuable information in terms of how to plan, how to use the cockpit, how to check the map, how to delete the freight orders if you made a mistake, and uh, how to cross-reference if the uh, freight units have been packed. Go back to ECC and check if the dates have been or are the same in the outbound as they are in the transportation proposal. So all that is very useful information for planning. Okay, so uh, key things today is basically that only plan for items that have been packed. Make sure you select the best proposal in terms of either distance, cost, or number of stages. Remember that the uh, planned transportation is not going to be, the, be displayed in the SOW, that you're only planning this transportation so that you can cross-reference our routes to the actual routes that the carriers are going to be providing us at a later stage. And very importantly, let's say that we, since this is a transfer scenario, if we are performing planning and we're going to, to use our own vehicles to transport the goods, right? We would still have to assign these carriers, which is the UN vehicles, to these freight orders, and we'd still have to monitor transportation, okay, even though they are our own vehicles. We would simply assign them to the freight orders and then manage uh, the events for these um, freight orders individually. But we're going to be doing that tomorrow and then on Friday again. So basically, now that we have another 10 minutes and we can still extend further, let's go through some questions because I think that we should definitely uh, question what I just did on screen and go over any concerns you may have. If you guys have discovered anything in your testing, let me know now as well. Okay, so I'm just going to pause for a minute and see who will ask me a question or who will write on the chat. Okay, Jamil, thank you. So we see here, deleting a freight order may mess up the transportation proposals. Therefore, it's recommended to cancel the FU as well. TM will create a new FU within 10 minutes to start up fresh without issues. Okay. All right. So yes, okay. You can definitely uh, delete the freight orders, but exactly like you're saying, if I deleted them, the freight unit, right? When you go into the cockpit, as I was showing before, will keep, let's say, the memory of the last transportation proposal we selected. So usually it's not going to only offer you that transportation proposal, it'll offer you more as we've seen. We saw that we had some for four stages, five stages. So it doesn't necessarily tell you you have to select that one. And now you can delete the freight unit. That Honestly, it is unnecessary to delete it because you can still plan nonetheless, but uh, TM should, yes, if you just delete the freight unit, generate a new one. Okay, usually you would delete the freight unit. The DTR is not, um, you can't really delete it per se. You can block it or cancel it as well. And then you usually the inbound, I don't think that once you block it, it will generate a brand new DTR. So you would only have to get rid of the freight unit. But again, I'm saying that it's unnecessary to get rid of the freight unit unless you would want to cancel completely the transportation for that freight unit and DTR because there's a mistake in the inbound and you're eventually going to delete the inbound and get a new PO. All you would have to do is delete the freight orders and plan again. Okay, so the freight unit doesn't necessarily have to be deleted or canceled. You're just deleting the uh, or canceling the freight orders would suffice. Yeah, can I interject that, Brian? Absolutely. Okay, the, the standard process that we're advising users is when you need to cancel the FO, is cancel yeah. the FO, then within mm -hmm. 10 minutes, delete the inbound delivery, which will then set the DTR to cancel status, and therefore no forward on documents will be generated. And then what will happen is after the 10 minutes job has passed, a new DTR will be created with a follow on with a new FU and new FOs as required. Okay, so two things here. Uh, 
because when we were training, uh, and usually I don't know how it's going to be in production. I know that usually every change you make to the inbound will automatically update the DTR. What we were learning at in during the workshop is that first you would have to cancel all documents in sequence, right? Get rid of the FOs, cancel the FU, and then cancel the, the DTR and then make changes to the uh, inbound, which will generate a new DTR. But in this case, you're saying that latest information is that just by updating the inbound, the DTR will automatically update itself? Yeah, because if you update the inbound, it will actually uh, update the existing DTR. But if you want exactly. to cancel the DTR, mm -hmm. what you have to yeah. do is can first cancel the FO. Once the FO is cancelled, mm -hmm. within mm -hmm. 10 minutes, delete the inbound delivery. Then what will happen, a new inbound delivery it will then be created after 10 minutes. That will then subsequently create a new DTR, new FU, and new FOs as required. So basically what we're looking at is to put the, the, the current DTR into cancel status so that no follow-on documents, FU, FOs, et cetera, are created or administered. But then to have the new FU and a new FOs, what you're looking at is actually having a new DTR. To do that, you have to delete the inbound delivery within 10 minutes of cancelling the initial FO. Okay, but now if you're deleting the inbound or let's say the outbound, it's because there's an issue in it or just basically you're doing that so that the system will create a new one? Because yeah, I know there's a lot of issues with the inbound. I uh, know there's an issue with the inquo term in the inbound and you're requesting people to delete it. But if there's not an issue with the inbound, right? Let's say yeah. that the inbound is still fine. Why would you delete it anyway? No, that's it. You wouldn't delete the inbound if there's nothing wrong with it. But if you wanted okay. to make significant changes to the inbound, then it's actually better to delete it and then actually let it recreate a new one. There you go. Okay, perfect. All right. So that, that makes a lot of sense. And actually, maybe we can uh, test this. I'm going to start deleting these FOs, okay, just to see how the system reacts. Because to this point, and uh, let's say, and I think there are two scenarios here, maybe even three, right? Let's say that we just want to get rid of or cancel this DTR before in the in the past or maybe a month ago, we would basically delete all the FOs. So basically what I'm doing here now, this is the, the last stage. So I can uh, basically just here click on cancel document and I'll say, okay, this will get rid of my FO, right? So if I go back to the screen and I refresh, the FO should disappear, the 971, very good. And the same thing will happen for the next one. So now I'm clicking on edit. I'm doing the same process here, cancel, <clears throat> getting rid of the second FO. Now I'm still the TS08 in the receiving mission, and now I have no more FOs here. Now I'm going to quickly log in as the, let's see, I'm going to log in as the TS07 of the issuing plant now, just to do this realistically. Okay, so I'm going to log back again now, make sure I'm selecting the right user and go in. I'm going to perform the same actions and now I'm going to look for my FO because I should have only one single FO here and delete that one as well. And here it is. Okay, so again, this is my DTR, so I don't want to touch that yet. I'm going to my freight order. I'm getting rid of this one. And let me just make sure that's the correct one. So you could always cross-reference it with your PO and outbound right from here. So we know it's the 4209, very good. We can just select this document here. And here we have a cancel document button here, okay? So basically you can do it from the actual freight order if you go in there individually, or let's see if we just cancel it from here say OK, and if I refresh, it should disappear. OK, so uh, here you go. Perfect. So within 10 minutes, right. that will be recreated. <laughs> Which one, the FO? Yeah, if there's any FOs for the, uh, because you're actually planning, uh, depending on the ink term, because you're at the issuing, aren't you? You're doing DAP, so you'd have to create them. But it would, they would come back in as dummy documents. 
Okay, so yeah, in this case, it's FCA and it's an STO scenario. So, and I did this yesterday, uh, the, they don't recreate automatically in STO scenarios. If this were FCA in a UNOE, definitely the automatic definitely. ones would generate. And that's where you need to be very careful, right? That's where you need to do something with the freight unit document, correct? Yes, yes. You have to be make sure that you know that you're in an STO environment and not inside the UNOE because they are totally different. Exactly. So because this is an STO, even though it's an FCA, right, it's not going to generate automatic FOs. So I could basically just leave it like this if I want to just replan. If there's nothing wrong with my inbound. Now let's say that the dates have changed completely and we should get rid of the whole thing. Well, according to what you're saying, uh, uh, Adrian, what we should do is at this point we can leave the DTR freight unit as is. And if we go to the outbound and make changes there, it will automatically update my documents. Or should I basically go into my freight unit and cancel that document? Or should I not even touch my freight unit in this case? No, leave ten, wait for 10 minutes, wait for the job to run. And then the uh -huh. uh, latest data that's in the outbound delivery will then be propagated through on the on onward documents. Okay, perfect. But you guys see, if I click on edit here for the freight unit document, you also have a canceling option here. Okay, so you guys could definitely cancel this document as well. Now, I'm unsure in production how the system is going to react to canceling the freight unit document. If the DTR, it still remains there. If it's going to generate a new uh, FU, now that is different, I don't think it should. So basically, you guys should leave these like this. Uh, and if you leave it in an STO scenario, nothing is really going to happen in, within 10 minutes or 15 or an hour because I did it yesterday and it all remains the same. But in a UNOE scenario, you'll see how it will automatically generate a new freight order for that stage that is vendor delivered. Okay, so at this point, if we want to make any changes, what we would do is navigate to the outbound here in ECC and make the changes to the outbound delivery document here. Yeah, that's, that's totally correct, because in the UNOE, the little 10 minute job will actually just refresh everything. In an STO environment, no, it will not. You have to do them manually. Exactly. Very good. OK, so that that's great. And thanks, uh, Adrian, for, for commenting on that. So that the students know that the changes that you performed in an inbound delivery document will reflect in the DTR and freight unit. So it's really not necessary to uh, delete or cancel the DTR freight unit documents because if you do so in ECC, whether you delete the outbound or the inbound, that will automatically have an effect in the DTR and FU and TM, which is actually the, the best way around it because then we won't have a, a load of DTRs and freight units that are canceled but still in TM just wandering around. And we can always uh, just update these uh, by uh, updating outbounds and inbounds in ECC. All right, perfect. Uh, anything else? OK, so we have Emmanuel says that this is now confusing. OK, so what, what part is confusing exactly? Because we have to understand uh, there are two scenarios. We have a UNOE scenario, which are goods that are coming from a um, a shopping cart for goods, and then we have scenarios for transfers, right, from one mission to another. If we're talking about a planning, right, where I planned something and the planning, let's say, is incorrect for any reason and I need to replan, but I've already planned and I have my freight orders generated, I should always go back in TM and make sure that I delete any generated freight orders. If we're talking about STOs, we can delete them in any case, whether it's FCA, XWorks, or DAP, and they will disappear. Okay, and then I can simply plan again. But if we're talking about changes in the delivery dates, we need to make those changes after we've deleted the freight orders and then go into the outbound and make the changes there. If we're talking about a UNOE scenario, Let's say it's an X work scenario. If we delete the freight orders, the system will not generate any new freight orders because it's an X work scenario. But if it's a DAP or FCA, the system always generates within 10 minutes, 15 minutes, an automatic freight order, which is the vendor stage. 
it will always do that. So you can delete it 50 times, the system will recreate it 50 times in 10, 15 minutes. The changes, if any, have to be made in the inbound or outbound if there are uh, critical changes in either delivery dates or if maybe we need to get rid of the inbound or outbound completely and regenerate those. I know there's a lot of cases now in production of inbound delivery documents that are stuck because they have the wrong inco term. And the process has to be clear. If we have already planned, we should go into TM and start deleting the freight orders in sequence and then go into the inbound and make the changes. If we haven't planned at all and some of the freight orders are automatically generated in TM, we should get rid of those automatically generated freight orders first and then go into ECC and make changes to the inbound and outbound. Okay, I know that if you're new to TM, if you haven't been trained, if this is your first session in, in the webcast, it may be a bit confusing, but I recommend to watch all the videos we've recorded so far because for people that have been testing the environment, this should be quite clear at this point. Now, let's see, would these changes not require raising fresh shopping carts or making changes? Okay, well, I mean, it depends on the, the, the level of the change. Right. If, if uh, basically it's a simple change that can be done in the inbound delivery document or outbound, then fine. If it's a completely different or it's a major change, let's say that the, even the PO needs to be raised again, then yes, we would have to make changes in the in the shopping cart of the PO. Okay, we're, we're talking about basic maybe a change in the delivery date. If uh, that can be done directly in the inbound delivery document, because now there's been a change in the date, we do that in the inbound delivery or outbound. Okay, we're, we're talking about a simple change uh, that can be made directly into the inbound delivery document. If this change is major and it needs to go back to the PO and shopping cart, then we need to go all the way back to the beginning and I guess race a shopping cart from scratch. Okay, we're basically talking about planning issues. Okay, thanks, Manuel. Any other question on planning or, or canceling FOs or how the scenarios work if we're talking about STO or <clears throat> we're talking about UNOE? We, I know we're eight minutes past the hour, but maybe we can take a last question or two or Adrian, Sasha, any comments? I know you guys are always uh, on any of the latest updates in TM. So if you wanna share something, let me know before I close the session. Remember, tomorrow we're gonna to focus on TS08 roles and we're gonna be updating the freight orders and also assigning carriers. And this time we're gonna focus on assigning UN carriers, okay, instead of assigning uh, freight forwarders. I think uh, one very important note is why we actually choose the delivery location from the matchbox is because there's a unique identifier listed against every single item. Uh, and location, and it's that information that's transferred. It's actually not the text that's actually within the match code or field. It's actually a unique identifier that's transferred across the TM. And that is why when we put um, anything in typing, anything in, it is not recognized because it's not against a unique identifier. So that is the information that's transferred across. So while we choose a particular delivery location, such as Durban underscore port, for instance, the unique identifier for Durban port is transferred to TM and TM recognizes it as Durban port, not actually the text Durban port. I hope that makes sense. <clears throat> okay, very good, Adrian. I think you're making reference to the shopping cart ship to address or delivery address? Yeah, that's right. Because it, it's okay. one of the latest things information has come in is that there's still people are still actually in the TM process overall, regardless if it's TOE, um, in the especially in the UNOE process, mm -hmm. is that they're still not selecting the delivery location from the matchbox. They're actually just copy and pasting from another shopping cart, which has been taken from the matchbox. But of course, it's not recognized. So people are still doing the copy and paste or typing in, which doesn't work. You have to manually select it from the matchbox, otherwise it's not gonna work. So this is important for all TM planners. Okay, thanks Adrian. And definitely, Adrian is, is focusing now mostly on a UNOE scenario. We had this session with Elena yesterday where we were stressing the fact that you're not manually 
uh, adding the delivery address by hand right in the shopping cart because eventually what you're doing is uh, let's say in a very simple way you're confusing the system now if we take a look at tm here in the cockpit right STOs, it's a lot simpler and we don't stress this as much because all the locations you guys see here on screen, for example, the loading, unloading, and all the ports here, the final destination, these are taken directly from our uh, delivery address in the STO. So by adding a storage location in the STO, we automatically have a linked uh, delivery address to that uh, storage location. So that's why there's no room for mistake when we're talking about STOs and usually when we're planning, the data is accurate. But in a shopping cart, there's a section for the delivery address that if you manually add it and it doesn't match what's there, that's why you should always select it from the matchbox. What you're doing is you're telling TM that maybe there's a stage that is not accounted for, that we have to plan a stage for, right? So instead of having one freight unit uniquely, we have two. And you're wondering, why do we have a stage from the vendor location to the, let's say, the warehouse location of the vendor, if it's the same place? That's because you've probably uh, made a mistake either in selecting or adding manually a handover location that you shouldn't have or adding a, a delivery address that is not in the system. That's why you should always select it from the matchbox or the dropdown, whatever case it is in a UNOA scenario. Okay, for STOs, the issue doesn't exist because you're basically, TM is taking the info from the storage locations that you guys see here. So every line, if you look at the delivery address, will already have an address linked to it. But when we're talking about shopping carts, if you do this manually, what this is going to do is in TM, maybe uh, provide you with incorrect unloading locations, which is going to add more stages to your planning. Okay, we have another comment here from Fanus. Uh, dear Brian, it would be very helpful if all these tips should be addressed in job aids. Uh, definitely, yeah. Th there's definitely a lot of updates that we have to add. And now that what we're discussing right now, what Adrian just made a mention to and what I'm talking about, these are so fresh that, I mean, honestly, if they were fruits, you wouldn't be able to eat them. They're so fresh. So basically, we were just updating this yesterday and we received the info on Monday. These are things that are upcoming daily. So we haven't been adding them to job aid so far. Or we haven't uh, delivered any official documents because it's very new. These are changes that are being implemented now. So as soon as we have them, as soon as we know what's 100% accurate, we'll be uh, sharing this with everyone. So with that, uh, everyone knows what happens when you don't follow the process. Brian. Yes. Sasha. Sasha. Yeah, uh, I can't share the screen, but I will send you a snapshot which you maybe can display from chat. I just want uh, uh, maybe a brainstorming with with the group because there is something I think we need to request uh, some changes. Uh, if you don't mind sharing that screenshot uh, that I just put in the chat. Sure. Okay. Let me see if I can drag this over. Okay, so this is uh, one of the cases. Uh, it's not uh, probably there are more. So we have a very simple process here. Buying uh, from a vendor delivered to Valencia. It could be any, any uh, entity by road. This is truck directly to the uh, entity. The problem we have, and I have checked for other location, the locations that we have uh, mapped across the missions uh, HQs are usually airports and ports. So if you see like the stages here, the first stage is a road from supplier location to the factory, which is basically the same. We understand that there is a this might be different, the address of the HQ and the, and the actual FCA delivery. But then we have air from factory to Valencia airport, which is absolutely incorrect and you cannot change it. And then from Valencia airport to Valencia base by truck. I think we need to request to have at least a city as a, as a delivery location so that we can book, for example, in this stage two, we could book a factory to Valencia City by road rather than airport, and then a road from Valencia City to the base. It would make much more sense than what we have now. 
And if anybody else check their, their location, it would be impossible to directly map uh, um, uh, destination as a, as a mission from the factory, especially if you are using road. For Brindisi, it was even worse. We had uh, uh, one port to another port and then uh, to the city. So I, I don't know if others have noticed this, but it will be something that you need. I would encourage you to check and maybe we made a global request to add a mission location rather than port and airport. In addition, actually, to port and airport. That, that could be an option and something that may be possible down the road well because it is strange to see that from a factory to an airport it's happening by air right it should probably be a factory to an airport then to valencia airport by air so it doesn't really represent what's going on or at least it doesn't seem so but in the sense of requesting new locations that you can always request through the master data request form but what you're requesting is to also have the emissions as your final destination yeah, well, well, destination like ES01153 is the mission yeah. itself. That is the, the destination. Yeah. But um, it would be nice to have also maybe a town or city so that you can actually plan a road delivery rather than uh, something like this. Because if I you, see. for example, in Valencia, the only two locations are Valencia Airport and Valencia Port. So if I would put uh, Valencia Port, then I will have C uh, uh, under stage two. And everything is actually coming directly by road. So, uh, so if I may interject, aren't you able to, at this point, delete stage three? I mean, what was the income term on this one? I think Next work. Yeah. Next work. Okay. So in this in this one, you could actually delete stage three and change stage two to the. You can actually go in and actually change the transportation mode from air to road. And instead of putting in the Valencia Airport, you could have just put in ES01153 inside the destination location, then updating the times. But actually, you could actually do that manually. We're doing an override of the FO. It doesn't work if you create additional three freight orders. Try it. <clears throat> you tried already. Brindisi also, and it just creates uh, additional freight order trying to connect. Uh, I don't think maybe it's not the location, maybe it's the mapping of the stages or routes in the master data. Yeah, yeah this is what it is. Yeah, yeah it seems to be a master data error because it tells yeah. you this shouldn't be, it should only be airport to airport for air. Mm -hmm. So this one, the factory location, unless it's particularly at a different airport, um, then technically even, for instance, let's say that this particular factory was based at Valencia Airport, then including that it should have still been truck. And because destination location is uh, picked up from delivery address, so you cannot even select it in the in the planning. Yeah? So it is the final, final delivery address in the PO. So if you try to search for uh, anything else for Valencia, you will only get the airport and port. You don't get anything else, so there is no way you can map. So if you clicked on edit in this particular one, yeah. and you try to change the I, actual translation. I can't share the screen, but uh, yeah, if you do that, then you, you only get the option for port or airport, nothing else for Valencia. And uh, but at the sec, you couldn't even type in ESC the yeah. one. No, no, no. Yeah, you'd have to have a, a lane created in the system that goes from the factory to Valencia directly. Yeah, bypassing uh, the, the airport. This is especially uh, because there are some uh, uh, especially important when you are doing uh, actual route changes uh, as as a freight order manager, because then yeah. you know it start creating routes that do not uh, make any sense, do not exist, so you cannot really have a correct route edit. Yeah, definitely adding, adding new lanes to master data will resolve this issue. But actually, this this one is an interesting case because technically the master, data, the master data is wrong in this particular case because the transportation mode should be road and not... That, uh, that is not exactly air. because I, I think uh, yeah. mapping the route now for everybody would be very complicated and, and uh, scary work. Rather than that, maybe under every delivery address or any city that we have where we have port and airport, especially if it's a final destination, we should enter like Valencia city 
And you know, yes, we will have three stages, but still it will be more and more logical. Then you will have stage two from factory to Valencia City, which is road, definitely. And then Valencia City to the base itself, which is again road. Yeah, that's an interesting one. I mean, especially the actual dates here, where the request pickup date and the actual um, and the actual departure date arriving. Yeah, that's a different story to it. <laughs> it takes yeah. like th three months. No, this to, was, this to was amended. That's why this was amended okay. Okay. because the pickup was the initial, then uh, departure date was given by the vendor. So. Yeah, but still, there was only four minutes. It yeah. was delayed. Don't, don't, don't go into that. We have seven months delays for all this number. So. Interesting. All right, guys. So there's definitely something to to bring up, and uh, in production, these are requests that are going to be constant. You no know, new lanes, new uh, zones, new locations. It's definitely going to be something to request, and also the skipping of the if we don't need to really go by port or airport. Uh, make sure that the system can represent that. Now, I know these are only estimations and plans and really no one but ourselves are going to have a visibility of this. But if the idea is to eventually optimize transportation in the long run, we should have at least a reflection of what it would look like in the system. So uh, you guys are you guys are right. All right. I so that, I think Jamal's come up with one as well. I think he wants to share something too. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna get rid of this one, and we have another one here. I would like to share a screenshot. We had one deleted the FOs, locking the legs that we planned before. Then the hub advised us to delete the related FU to refresh back the proposal. Okay, let's see. Okay, so definitely this is also one that it does seem though that we had. Okay, so this is an FCA scenario probably. DAT, something like that, uh, because I see that some of them are being planned, but the other ones are already there. So some of the freight orders seem that they're already planned, and you're only really planning for one. Um, Ryan? Yes. Can I step in? Sure. Um, actually, um, the issue that we had is that uh, there was a problem with the uh, planning, and we had to delete the FOs both the automatic and uh, yeah, the ones yeah. that we planned for. Now, uh, once we did that, we went back to the transportation cockpit. The proposals that uh, was giving us was blocking the legs that we planned before. Then uh, we had to go back and cancel the freight unit. Uh, the system after 10 minutes will refresh, will give us a new freight unit. And after that, the legs that we planned earlier was open, so we can do the planning again. Okay, so I think uh, besides the fact that the system would refresh the freight unit and give you the new ones, this blocking that you were having was an issue that I had similarly last week when I was uh, deleting an FCA scenario and I was deleting freight orders. There's a way to override that blocking because what basically the system is doing is it's telling you that you can't plan because there's a conflict, right? Yeah, so there's a way to override that blocking for that freight order that is giving you the conflict, and then you're able to plan nonetheless. Okay, so there's a way around that, but if it works with the freight unit by canceling the freight unit and getting a fresh one, but the the way to do so would basically be here. If, if you guys take a look at the screen that I'm in now, if I planned these, right? Let's say that I, I went with this, and then maybe we can call it a day with this one, because I know we're, we're going into half an hour plus. Okay, so I just want to show you this. So, Jamil, is that you or is someone else unmuted? I think okay, that one. okay. All right. So let me go with this, right? If I accept the planning here for this one, and let's say I went to save, and now we have our freight orders, 
if I'm basically, if I'm taking a look at one, there's an option in the freight orders, especially when I'm talking about the, okay, well, let me see. You're not authorized. I don't know why it's not. Oh, okay, because I'm looking at the one for the receiving plant. Okay, uh, here, this is, should be mine. And this one I should see. Okay, so when you're looking at your freight order, you have a blocking information tab here. Okay, take a look at those for the automatically generated ones. Once you've tampered with the locations and the dates and so, the automatic ones, unless you delete them, sometimes they regenerate again and they still regenerate with the same exact uh, source and destination location, same means of transport, everything the same. There's a way you'll see here that it says either planning blocked. Usually it's the planning that is blocked. If you click on edit, you have an option in this section here below that says over rule block so block overruled when you select that it automatically unblocks the planning and then you can plan again with that freight order that it was there uh, originally okay so always go into that freight order that generates automatically if it's giving you the problem and in the blocking tab if you click on edit make sure you overrule the blocking and then it will allow you in the cockpit to plan anyway Okay, but you should basically delete, you did the correct process to delete all the freight orders. The freight unit is usually unnecessary to get rid of because you can just plan accordingly, but it's the blocking. I know sometimes the system does that, and if it continues to do so in production, maybe, who knows, it may become an issue in the long run. But just so you know, you can overrule this blocking and plan again. Okay, Jamil? I, I believe you could hear me there. All right, everyone. So let's call it a day for today. We'll continue tomorrow and then on Friday we can go through Q&A forever and ever and we can stay all day on, on the chat and, and talk about it. Okay, so thanks for a great session again. Thanks for all the interventions and all the... Uh, experiences you've had with PM, these challenges are definitely very good for all of us. So unless you have anything to say last minute, I'm going to close the session. Cell phone. Cell phone. Yeah, you, you have combo. Yeah, I have combo cell phone. Okay, nothing else? Okay, no, that's brilliant. Thank you, Brian. It's most appreciated. All right, thank you guys. Thank you, Adrian, for all the insight. All right, well, have a good day. Thank you, you too. Do you know my name? I don't need to know my name. What's your name? <laughs>